Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Lou Ann Riley, Grow Group and Discipleship Director, and I'm here with our business administrator, Sully Sullivan. How are you? Good. Good. For All me. right. We're so glad to hear from you again today. Um, I think it was a very timely and relevant message for how busy this season gets. I'm just right. even thinking with Christmas Eve being seven days away, mm -hmm. all I can think about is the enormous amount of things that I need to do this week. Mm -hmm. um, and I love how you pointed out that we all are the innkeeper. We did have um, a question come in mm -hmm. um, and this person asked, I understand what you are saying about making room for the things in your life that you ascribe or value to, like the J.J. Watt analogy. Mm -hmm. However, what if you have to admit that Jesus doesn't naturally appear like J.J. White in your life um, because it's easier and more natural to as ascribe value to other things? Mm -hmm. What advice do you have for changing this in your heart? Yeah, I mean, I think that's really the root of the problem, right? If you look at Luke chapter 10, what does it say about Martha? It says she was distracted. And we all get distracted by so many things in our lives that it's hard to keep Jesus at the center. Um, and so, you know, I was as I was preparing this sermon this week, I almost talked about Peter uh, because I really relate to Peter in my life. Um, you know, in, in Matthew chapter 13, there's this passage that I want to read. Um, Jesus comes to his disciples, and in, or excuse me, it's Matthew 16, verse 13. He comes and he says, hey, who do the people say that the Son of Man is? Who are people saying that I am? And they say, well, some say you're John the Baptist. Some say Elijah or this other prophet. And he says, well, who do you say that I am? Because that's really the question we all need to ask is, who do I think Jesus is? Because ultimately, that's what matters. And Peter says, you're the Messiah. You're the son of the living God. He has this recognition that Jesus is the Messiah. He is worth it all. And Jesus replies to him, he says, blessed are you, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. It says that God revealed this to him. And I think maybe that's the place to start is asking, God, I want more of you in my life. I want to be filled by your Holy Spirit. I want to see you as most valuable, but there are all these other things. So asking, can this be revealed by the Father? And, you know, I think another thing what I like about Peter is he's like us. He he knows this in this moment, and then just moments later, Jesus is like, hey, I'm going to be crucified. And he's like, oh no, Lord, we're going to battle. And he's like, get away from me. You know, he has these moments where with utter clarity, he knows who Jesus is, but then He's found around the fire and he's disowning Jesus. He has these moments and I love at the end of John, I think it's the very last chapter, 20 or 21, he sits down with Peter and he just brings him right back and he says, hey, do you love me, Peter? Yes. Okay, well then come on, you know, tend my sheep. He gives him all these actions. He's like, just come on, come back in. And I think that's what Jesus would say to us is, hey, it's okay. Like, but come back, come move forward with me. Let's do this together. So that's what I would say is just pray and ask the Lord. I think he will reveal to that. I think he will show you the things that need to be most valuable in your life um, if we ask for it. Yep, and I, I think you're right that it does start with a heart change. You can redo your schedule and block out time and do all mm -hmm. kinds of things, but unless your heart truly is in it, ultimately you're going to hit the snooze on the alarm. Right turn the TV back on, mm -hmm. hit Netflix again. Yeah. Um, and so with the stirring in your heart to make a change, to make room for Jesus, mm -hmm. as you um, urged us to do today, um, let's just say that I'm leaving here today and, and I'm responding to, to, yes, Lord, I want to make more mm -hmm. room for you. What does that practically look like? Yeah, well, that's a question I've been asking myself even lately is, okay, how do I, make room? How do I build more room? Are there things that I need to say yes to less? And I think the first thing is don't answer that question alone. I, I think uh, either we just have a blurred pers perspective. It's so helpful to either process that 
with your spouse or with a good friend who knows you and says, hey, am I overcommitted, particularly for that first one? Are there things that I just need to say no to? I think that's a helpful place. When it comes to the moving things out, um, I think sometimes it can be small things. I'll tell you for me what it is. You know, I mentioned, hey, before you turn the car on, you know, say a prayer. For me, it's turning the radio off. Um, I've got a, you know, 10, 15 minute drive to work. And instead of listening to the radio, instead of listening to Spotify, turn it off and just spend the time praying. And, you know, sometimes even on the, the drive to work today, I, I kind of ran out of things that I wanted to pray about. I prayed for the sermon. I prayed for standing in the gap and I, things weren't coming to mind, but that's okay. It's, it's taking that step and it's moving forward and, and developing this relationship. Um, you know, another thing for me is, again, it, it, most of the time it happens for me in the car. That's, that's me. Um, the technology has caught up with us. The apps on our phone, even the FaithBridge app, when you go to the Bible, you can have it read it to you. I feel like there's no longer an excuse. You know, sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't have time to sit down. Well, I'm driving places. You know, I can listen to the scripture and just, I'll just keep backing it up and listening over and over. And if something sticks out to me, you know, one of our pastors, Terry Takel, said, hey, when you get to the red light, go find that scripture, copy it, and email it to yourself. That way it's, you're reminded of it. And I'll tell you, as I've done that, even just this week, there have been instances where I'm meeting with one of my employees and I'm able to speak some truth into her life because of the scripture I just read or even to my own life. So I think sometimes it's just the little things that we do, turning the car radio off. You know, when you pick up your kids from school, engage them in a conversation, turn on, you know, a reading of the Jesus Storybook Bible or something. When you're going to bed at night, I think sometimes when we capture the little moments, that leads to the bigger moments. Um, so. I think from a practical standpoint, I'd say that. And then what I love as a leadership team, we've discovered, hey, the practical is missing. Our congregation is asking this a lot. What can we do practically? What can we do? And so that's what our series in January is about. You know, we sat in a room this week and really mapped out our Resolve for More series. And that's what it's going to be is come resolve for more and do it in a way that's practical, not this giant step of I'm going to work out every day. No, I mean, by the second day, you're done, right? But let's do this practically. Let's resolve for more together in prayer, uh, in reading the Bible, uh, in giving, and in, with community. That's what we're going to be talking about in January. And I'm excited because I think that's that's where I am. I think that's where a lot of our congregation is. So, Such a great message. And I'm excited for January as well mm -hmm. um, as we look more at these pieces of discipleship and how we can grow together in that way. So thank sure. you for your message. Sure. And thank you for joining us here for Postscript. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.